I'm Savitri Hensman, Savi for short. I'm a British Sri Lankan lesbian, pronouns she, her, Anglican, a writer, activist and involvement coordinator in health and social care research. Thanks to the conference organisers for inviting me to talk about a topic close to my heart and to everyone who has come along to join in the conversation. It's easy to shy away from talking about some aspects of diversity or end up being defensive or feeling guilty, ashamed or resentful or frightened of saying the wrong thing or using the wrong words, which can be tricky since language keeps changing and may depend on context. What's more, there's no universally agreed position on equality issues even among people who are LGBTQIA+, Christian and of global majority heritage, people of colour or whatever term one prefers. If the recent history of this country has taught us anything, it includes the fact that having diverse bases at the top doesn't mean that key concerns among those who may share some aspect of their identity will necessarily be taken on board. Certainly, none of us can rightly just be described in terms of lists of categories which might be linked to cultural difference, advantage or disadvantage. And I think there can be risks in competing as to who is most oppressed. Power and status can vary across time and place, and each of us is unique, as well as having some measure of choice about our values and how we act, whatever the given aspects of our identity are. I'll share a few experiences and reflections, which I hope, even if you don't fully agree, might get you thinking and talking. To start with, I think it's important to avoid either glossing over differences and injustices, or acting as if these are the whole story. There is plenty of evidence that, on one hand, while diversity can offer much to society, damaging inequity persists. And on the other hand, that justice-seeking, mutual care and solidarity across barriers can make and have made a real difference. We're more than mere victims or helpless bystanders. It can be demoralizing, as well as contrary to history, to write off the gains which have been made. And perhaps for Christians, our faith tradition leads us to believe the Holy Spirit is at work transforming communities and societies, as well as individuals, costly though this may be, and sometimes involving a painfully slow process. I came to the UK as a small child with my family in the 1960s. At that time, the economic and educational systems, media and top leaders tended to drum into the public the notion that some types of people were inferior and destined to serve, or frightening or pitiful, or would be happier if they learned to be, quote, normal, unquote. Discrimination on various grounds was often blatant, for instance, in housing and employment, and indeed embedded in the law in some instances, though legal protection against certain kinds was beginning to be introduced. Open racism was widespread, including in many churches, though luckily we weren't discouraged from worshipping in our parish church. And there were also white Christians who helped out their neighbours and worked for racial justice, sometimes facing threats at a time when violently racist parties uh, often held considerable sway, uh, particularly in certain neighbourhoods, or being labelled race traitors. An influential politician, who was also an active Church of England member, Enoch Powell, was becoming increasingly outspoken and went on to warn of rivers of blood because people like me had turned up in Britain. He was sacked from the shadow cabinet, but immigration laws would get tighter affecting even people with UK passports. Sexism was widespread and frequently systemic. Treatment of LGBTQ plus people often dire, though sex between men was partly decriminalised when I was in the infants. And there was next to no mention of LGBTQ plus people of colour in newspapers, magazines or on television. It was all too easy to disbelieve what one felt or observed and internalise society's image of oneself as well as of others, 
hard to unlearn dominant ideas. A lot has changed, though there's still quite a way to go, and sometimes things in the move in the wrong direction. Time doesn't necessarily assure progress towards greater justice and equality. Research and everyday experience show that this remains a deeply unequal society and world in multiple ways. Yet advances and victories deserve to be celebrated, while recognising the mental and physical wounds which the past may have left, and being able to give and receive forgiveness for not always getting things right, especially when the right course to take hasn't always been obvious. Another thing I reckon I've learnt is that, though different kinds of oppression have their own features, there may be learning points for resisting injustice of other kinds and of opportunities to work together and make connections, which can be a source of strength and open the door to blessings of various sorts. I think, for instance, of the anti-colonialist and anti-imperialist movements with which my late parents were connected, including the work among Christians to disentangle the personally and collectively liberating good news of Christ from the misuse of religion to instill obedience to the powerful and racial and other kinds of hierarchy. This has been useful in questioning what I and others were told the Bible and tradition taught about sexuality and gender. In my teens, I became active in the anti-racist movement. This ranged from taking part in protests about suspicious deaths at the hands of the police, which, sad to say, happened and still happens here, as well as in the USA, to helping to organise a series of discussions in our congregation about Christ and race, and joining Christians against racism and fascism. Some Anglicans at the time thought that that name was rather too negative. Um, in the early 80s, as a committee member of Islington and Haringey Gay Group, uh, and then as I became a worker for the Black Lesbian and Gay Centre project, which was London-wide, but initially located in Haringey in North London, I joined efforts with others to encourage Haringey Council to move forward on LGBTQ plus equality. Amidst a local and national pushback against moves towards greater equality of various kinds and attempts by politicians to stir up culture wars, which might ring a bell today, 35 years ago, I was one of the organisers of a Smash the Backlash march against racism and homophobia. Uh, I was also part of two movements that helped to organise that, Positive Images and Haringey Black Action. And there was considerable work that needed to be done to counter misinformation about equality initiatives, particularly around teaching about diversity in schools and LGBTQ plus inclusion. Likewise, I became a volunteer in what was initially the gay Christian movement, which soon become, became the lesbian and gay Christian movement and is now One Body, One Faith, about 40 years ago, I think, representing it in a coalition Christian organisations for social, political and economic change, building understanding of what kinds of issues we were addressing and also bringing back information and understanding about those other groups that were working for a better world in various ways. In the early 2000s, I would go on to join the board of LGCM indeed serving for as while as vice chair and then chair, while I also represented the organisation as a trustee of Inclusive Church, which takes up a, a range of different kinds of issues uh, around inclusion in churches. Uh, indeed, I was also the lead on economic inclusion. There are some genuinely difficult issues which may arise in trying to promote mutual understanding and solidarity. 
and communicate in honest and sensitive ways across difference. For instance, in recent weeks, I've been reminded that I may react differently to common national symbols and have a less trusting attitude towards use of state power in the UK and everywhere than a lot of LGBTQIA plus and other affirming Christians, which may lead us to look in different ways at what might be the favoured tactics and strategies towards achieving change. Uh, as well as the kind of world in which we do live and would want to live. Nevertheless, I believe it's worth making an effort to create more spaces to deepen mutual understanding and support and share learning and dreams of what Christians might describe as God's realm or commonwealth on earth. This may involve telling stories about our lives to one another um, maybe using the arts to help gain a sense of what goes on for other people, what matters to um, to us, to one another. Um, learning in different ways, depending on what may resonate most with us. Um, sh sharing not only facts and figures, but also um, emotions and concerns. Living with difference, learning from the past and present, questioning assumptions, understanding one another's experiences. These are not always easy, but if we can do so, at least make an effort, there's a lot to gain.